information. Ooh, Marty Longo's joining us by a mobile. Wunderbar. All right, it is officially 1500. I think I got that right, three o'clock for all of us here stateside. Yay, thank you, Tom, for the affirmative thumbs up. Welcome to Stamp Chat. My name is Heidi. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Wednesday, I hope you've all enjoyed a beautiful day thus far. Uh, it's very, we're very excited today. We're our guest is Dr. Kathy Brackville. She's the Director of Education for the American Philatelic Society. She will be talking about one of our institutions, our tradition summer seminar, where it's virtually a camp for philatelists. And typically it's in, it's in Belfont at the APS headquarters. But as the situation has changed, we too have had to pivot. Um, and we certainly want, wouldn't want to let anybody down so uh, Dr. Brackville and Ms. Kathleen Edwards have been working their tails off and helping to, uh, as I said, pivot onto an online platform. And so today that's what we'll be listening to and learning about is unveiling Summer Seminar. Before we go to Kathy's chat, I do wanna express my gratitude on behalf of the APS for your continued membership and support. There are so many great resources. If you're not a member, go ahead and check out stamps.org. We have the digital library available right now. The American Philatelist is open. So these are services that are typically delegated to APS members. However, we've opened the door for a, a preview, if you will, for all potential APS members. So check out stamps.org. That information will be live and free available through the, uh, through the end of May. So you'll want to check that out. APS has got lots of services. We have $45 that starts you off on US and uh, 55 Canadian, 65 international, and a 60, uh, $45 digital membership. So thank you so much for your continued support of the American Philatelic Society. Uh, it's doing a lot of good, particularly now at this time, keeping us connected. And there'll be a major source of connection at the summer seminar. So I will mute us all and then I'll unmute our presenter. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat box. I'll be watching those. We'll save those for Q&A and I will give you the opportunity. I'll call your name if you wish. I know uh, Long Mr. Longo, you're usually on a mobile, but I'll call your name out if you'd like to ask your question with your own voice. I'll give you about two, three seconds. Otherwise, I'll press on and ask you for it. I'll, I'll say the question on your behalf. So Dr. Brackville, thanks so much. Well, good afternoon. There we go. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about this year's summer seminar. It will be something very different from anything that's been done before. Kathleen Edwards and I have been working really hard on scheduling a lot of different sessions. So for those of you that might not know about summer seminar, this will actually be the 41st year that there has been a summer seminar. Last year, we had the most participants ever and we were pretty full at the APS during the third week in June. This year it had been scheduled for June 21st to the 25th and what that typically entails is a person scheduling one major course that meets for four and a half hours a day and usually that's a Monday, Tuesday class or a Wednesday, Thursday class and there are some classes that ran Monday through Thursday. Well, that whole idea did go out of the window when we were trying to figure out how to schedule some summer seminar sessions. With the, the limitations we have with GoToWebinar, we can only run one session at a time. So instead of just trying to cram a lot of different sessions into one week, we decided to run sessions throughout the month of June. So we will spend the month of May helping the instructors feel comfortable using that platform. 
and then um, putting things out in a schedule that you'll see today. So, why let I go? There we go. So here are some of the features for this year's summer seminar. It will be done totally online. There are over 50 different sessions. And the sessions, except for the Free Fridays, all the sessions except for Free Fridays are for APS members only. Some of the sessions, there will be a live instructor doing the entire presentation. Others will be a recorded presentation with the instructor there for questions at the end. And we're doing the pre-recorded sessions because of any issues that could happen because of, of internet connectivity. And they will be led by philatelic experts. These are people that you've read their work, you've seen their exhibits, they are dealers you may have purchased things from, and they are just people who have very specialized um, knowledge, and they are willing to share it with us. Other features, a one-hour session will be $10. So it would be possible if you took all 50 sessions during the month of June that it would actually cost you less than a week at summer seminar paying the $565 tuition. And that would be without the travel and without the, the lodging expenses. Multiple sessions will be priced accordingly. So if it's a three session, three sessions of one hour each, that would be $30. The four session is $40. And like I said, there are free Fridays. Free Fridays will be people who are presenting um, things about the library, things about APS member benefits, and there's one other person who was adamant that his session would be a free session. So that is also on free Friday. During May, Kathleen and I are going to schedule several different opportunities for people to take go to webinar tutorials so that you're comfortable in a go to webinar environment so that you know how to put questions in the chat box, know how to raise your hand if that is available for the session you're in. and um, knowing how to register for to take the classes. We'll also, in the education department, being off, we'll offer Monday morning meetings. They will, well, they won't be in the morning, uh, unless you're on the West Coast. Um, at noon, from noon to 12.30, we'll do Monday meetings where we'll pre preview the courses that will be available that week, um, do any question and answer, do any tech support that might need to happen, and um, just a, a general half hour session, and those would definitely be free. All sessions are going to be recorded, and then they will subsequent, subsequently be placed in the C3A platform for purchase. And the only reason why a session wouldn't be placed in C3A later is if we ran into technical difficulties and the recording didn't happen as, as desired. So you might be thinking, okay, so summer seminar, I can take a $10 class, what classes might be available? Well, first, I've kind of grouped them. And I already mentioned about the tutorial. So the tutorial would be, again, about how to use GoToWebinar so that you feel comfortable in the classroom environment when you're taking an online class. For those of you who are already here, you already obviously feel comfortable in this environment. And this might not be something that, that you would need to do. Next, the weekly previews. Those would be the, the Monday of each Monday in June at noon, and it would just be a preview and question and answer and any tech support. The free Fridays, that's the member benefit piece, and that will include Scott Tiffany doing several talks about the, the library along with Marion Mills and Wendy Mazzorti talking about Stamp Store. And also a former YPLF student, Tassos Kalfas, who works for the Inspector General's office, wants to do a talk about the Inspector General's office, but felt that it would be a conflict.
Hold on, Kathy. You're muted. Go ahead. Oh, get muted again, hon. Hold on, please. Okay. Are you messing with my ma my mind? <laughs> there will be sessions on postal history, and that will include um, a whole series by Gary Lowe. There will be one on World War II postal history and on modern postal history. There will be items for people who are collectors of U.S. So there will be a Washington Franklin's three, three session course. There will be a session on hand stamps. There will be some items concerning banknotes, printing, essays and proofs, measuring perforations. I can't read my handwriting. The future of something. Oh, the future of mail delivery color and phosphorescence. There will be items for worldwide collectors, such as Poland, the UPU, the Penny Black, Great Britain line engraved, Belgium, India, Germany, and Mexico. There will be two revenue classes one on manufactured tobacco, that will be four sessions, and one on alcohol and food products, which will be a different four sessions. And then another category where we have several different courses that will appeal to beginning, intermediate, and advanced exhibitors. And there are a couple that focus on treatment, design out and designing album pages, or exhibit pages. So you can see we're hitting a lot of territories with all our dif different sessions. So here's an example of the very first week of summer seminar in June. You can see that there are typically three sessions every day. And I tried not to have as many on Friday since that's free Friday. I don't have times on this schedule. It would have made it much too messy. Most sessions start, there'll be a session that typically starts at, at noon or at one Eastern time. Another one that starts at three Eastern time. And if there's an evening session, it will start at six Eastern time. So these are sessions that you'll see for the very first week in June. The second week in June, same thing. There are typically three sessions every day, except on Friday. And again, the first session typically will start at noon. The second session will start at three and the evening session starts at six and those are all Eastern time. And notice on Monday the 8th, the third one down. It says Fundamentals of Postal History Part 2, Understanding and Determining Postal Routes. Gary Lowe is offering five different sessions. Every one will be on a Monday that starts at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. These are standalone, so if a person wants to take all five, great, but if they want to simply take one out of the five or two out of the five, that's fine. If you look on Tuesday, the second one down, the Penny Black and Great Britain line engraved stamps, Doug McGill will be doing a three session class and it meets on three consecutive Tuesdays. This is one where when you sign up, you would sign up for all three. And if you look at the bottom line, the manufactured tobacco products, US tax paid revenues, there are four sessions that meet all four days this this particular week. So it meets Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. 
And if a person signs up for the revenues course, they sign up for all four. The third week in June, for some reason, I don't have a third row on this one, but if you look at this one, there are, um, Tassos Calfus is going to tell us about what mail delivery might look like in the future. And Wayne Youngblood is going to share his expertise about color. If you look at Thursday, turn your collection into an exhibit. This is a three-part course that started the previous week. So it will run on Thursdays from 1.15, I think it starts at 1.15, 1.15 to 2 or 2.30. And um, if a person signs up for that, they sign up for the entire course. The fourth week in June, again, a jam-packed listing of courses. And added to the mix on Free Friday is Bill Dixon, our resident expert on fakes and forgeries, and he's going to talk about 10 books to start your forgery reference collection. And then the last, last two days in June are Monday and Tuesday, and on Monday that will finish up Gary Lowe's part five, and Ed Andrews will be talking about advanced presentation techniques for exhibits, and Michael Bloom will talk about designing album and exhibit pages. One, one additional thing that we're going to have, Jim Lee did a course on essays and proofs back in November. His course is a nine part course. It's a little over three hours. It's already on video. And what he will do is for people who sign up for this class for June and they would take it on demand when they felt that they could, then we will schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with him to do question and answers, and that would be at Jim Lee's convenience. So Kathleen is going to talk a little about what we're doing with getting all the descriptions on the website. So. All right, um, so right now we're working on a course catalog to post on the website. Um, the website is currently being updated with uh, information on summer seminar online. Um, I hopefully we'll have some new information on the web summer seminar webpage uh, by the end of today and most definitely uh, we're hoping by the end of the week. And the course catalog will have descriptions for each course and workshop. Um, it'll list the price for each um, course and workshop. It'll also um, feature the information about the tutorials and the Monday meetings, as well as a calendar. So you can see um, all the courses throughout the month of June. And uh, just a, a general description of what uh, Summer Seminar Online is. And the website itself um, will also have a calendar where you can click on uh, the different courses, pull up their description, and we'll tell you how to register, um, to register for each specific course um, and how that process will work. And before we answer any questions, I was going to ask Ron Lesher if he might give a brief description of the two courses that he will be teaching. So, Heidi, can you unmute him? Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, well, the first uh, the first session uh, on on manufactured tobacco. Uh, it's it's rather interesting. Uh, the farmers aren't taxed on tobacco, only when tobacco is manufactured into some consumer product, whether it be chewing tobacco, pipe tobacco, cigarettes, cigars, snuff, and so on. Uh, the uh, 
uh, currently Eric Jackson is working on the 12th edition of the Springer catalog. These are, these are all stamps that are not listed in the Scott Specialized. Um, it's been a long time since we've had an update to the Springer catalogs. Eric, uh, after uh, Sherwood Springer died, Eric uh, acquired the rights to the Springer catalogs and we have been working for several years now on updating that catalog. So this is essentially, uh, there should be a lot of new information about uh, uh, the manufactured categories. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can remember all of them. The first one is the cigarette category. The prefix for that is TA. Those are class A cigarettes. Uh, that's below a certain weight per thousand cigarettes. If they are heavier than that, they are called class B cigarettes. So that's the TB category. We will be looking at that. Uh, TC is the cigar stamps that begin all the way back in 1865. Uh, and all of these categories, by the way, continue up to about 1960. And so that's what we're going to be examining. Um, the TD is something called small cigars, uh, TE is snuff, TF and TG are other forms of tobacco, whether they be chewing tobacco or uh, uh, pipe tobacco. Um, but uh, there are uh, several thousand uh, uh, different uh, stamps that we will be uh, taking a look at, not all of them, but, but we'll certainly be looking at all of these categories. Eric, uh, as most of you probably know, has been a longtime dealer in revenues, and he has, he's probably one of the, he's one of the two most prominent dealers of, uh, of US revenues. Uh, I don't know what else to say about this. Uh, my particular, uh, uh, view of revenues is to look at the social context as to why why any of these things were subject to attacks at a particular period of time and tobacco scene uh, tobacco aimed for the consumer has always been a uh, uh, a category that has been uh, been taxed beginning in the uh, 1860s those those uh, Taxes have not gone away. They continue today. We just don't use stamps for them. Uh, in the uh, second session on alcohol, uh, we are going to look at uh, the various categories of, of stamps that were used to show that the taxes on alcohol were paid, or there are some categories which mean that, that signify that uh, the, the tax has not yet been paid. Um, we, when alcohol is distilled, um, it is first, it can be placed into a bonded warehouse at the distillery. And so there are distillery warehouse stamps that indicate that the tax has not yet been paid. We better not see a container with a dis just a distillery warehouse stamp on it out there for, for sale in a retail establishment. Uh, and then we have the distilled spirits tax paid stamps. They begin again uh, back in the 18, late 1860s. Uh, distilled spirits were not bottled at that period of time. They were shipped out in large barrels to, to wholesale dealers and retail dealers, and you would take your uh, container in to be filled from, from a given barrel. Uh, so those are the distillery warehouse stamps. Uh, I was introduced to revenue stamp collecting by a friend of, uh, of, of our family, uh, who used to go around Reading, Pennsylvania to large industrial plants and peel the uh, distilled spirits tax paid stamps off the uh, the large containers. This is uh, 
in the late 1930s and in the 1940s he was doing that. Uh, so those stamps continued in use uh, on, until the, uh, the, the 1980s. Um, the third category is something called wholesale liquor dealer stamps. When they shipped out barrels, it's possible that uh, uh, a dealer wished to uh, break that up into smaller containers uh, and sell maybe uh, uh, 20 proof gallons of distilled spirits to a, to a retail dealer. And so they had to have some evidence that the tax was paid. That was the wholesale liquor dealer stamps. Again, those were used uh, well into the 1960s. Um, and then there's something called rectified spirits. Rectified spirits are spirits that have been, uh, the distilled spirits have gone through multiple distillations. Rum is a, is a rectified spirit. Uh, if somebody decided that they had some very expensive alcohol that was not being, uh, was not in high demand, uh, it was too expensive for people to purchase, they could mix it with a lower grade distilled spirit, a lower grade whiskey, and, and have a blended whiskey. But that new container needed a stamp and that got a rectified spirit stamp on it. Uh, bottling stamps, some of you may remember the red bottle stamps that went over the top of liquor bottles or the green ones, which were put on distilled spirits bottled in bond. They were initially bottled in in distillery warehouses and they could be kept there for an additional seven years before they uh, distill or had to pay the tax on it. They were usually, uh, uh, they were kept in the warehouse, perhaps in casks, but eventually after a, a number of years, they, they used to bottle them usually at a hundred proof. And so we will look at those, uh, those green uh, distilled spirits bottled in bond uh the red the distilled spirit stamps come into use in 1934 at the end of prohibition and then there are some black ones black uh bottle stamps uh that were used on 190 proof alcohol something that we can no longer purchase uh or it's possible that they were there are some additional stamps that were designated for export and didn't signified that the tax hadn't been paid. We also will look at uh, lock seals, uh, uh, hydrometer labels signifying that there are uh, official government uh, hydrometers that will measure the alcohol content to determine how much tax has to be paid. Uh, and the final category that we're going to look at probably in both of these sessions is something called special tax stamps. They're big, big stamps uh, that signify that the annual tax on various occupations uh, have been paid. Uh, I know I've gone on for some length there, but that gives you some detail uh, as to what we will be covering in, in, the, in the two, uh, two weeks courses. Thank you, Ron. And I don't know if Scott Tiffany, he doesn't know that I'm going to ask him, but I don't know if Scott Tiffany wants to share some of the highlights from the planned presentation in June. Sure, Kathy. Um, so the three uh, sort of sessions that we have planned, uh, one is on tips and tricks of searching the union catalog. So, a lot of people probably know how to search basic things in the union catalog, search for an author's name, search for a title of a book, and uh, find something. And we're, what we're going to try and do is show you some of the ways that we search the catalog, a little more detail, so that you can refine your searches. You can do complicated searches, more detailed searches, and find the things that you need in the union catalog. Uh, I'm trying to pick my memory as to the other two. Uh, one was on... Marion was doing updates or yeah. things to come. Okay, so what Marion's gonna talk about are some of the volunteer projects that we have in the library, as well as some of the things that are upcoming with the library. 
Uh, I've mentioned in other stamp chats that we have the, we're updating the union catalog to a new platform. She's gonna talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm also gonna do a session on APRL Digital and the digital collections, uh, where we're going this year with it. We're going to expand, right now it's just primarily journals. We're gonna expand into things like books and photographs. We have a couple of photograph collections that we wanna put up on the site and sort of show people a little bit more basically where we're going with the catalog and or with the APRL digital database. And also writing for the APR, the, 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 the PLR. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so <laughs> one of the things that most people may not know who are APS members, we do have a quarterly journal in the library called the Philatelic Literature Review. Uh, it's a little different in terms of its uh, focus, whereas the American Philatelist is more about the stamps and the collecting and sort of behind, you know, getting into detail of those things. What we look for in the Philatelic Literature Review is basically the research, the resources used for uh, research. Uh, the, the literature review has a number of different sort of sections to it. We have a book review section where people uh, write reviews for us on new and upcoming philatelic literature that's out there. Uh, we also have articles which we sort of publish in the literature review. And these again concern mostly research, books that are coming out, publishers. We've had a great series written over a couple of years about various sort of booksellers in the philatelic world. Um, as well as some other sort of columns. I'm looking for possibly someone to write sort of a regular column uh, in the Philatelic Literature Review. So I'd be interested in anybody who's interested in coming out and hearing the session and sort of even sort of brainstorming a little bit with them with ideas that they may have for the journal and things we'd like to do with the journal going forward. Thank you, Scott. So I would appreciate and entertain any questions or thoughts that you might have. Okay. So Hal Turner, do you want, would you like to ask your question? Okay, I said I was gonna go three seconds. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, go ahead. I was curious on the Monday sessions, the weekly previews, is there a charge to attend those? No, there would not be a charge. Okay. That's what I thought. I didn't want to assume. I'm panning the gallery. Any other questions? Nothing in the chat box. When do the tutorials for the go-to webinar begin, Kathy? The end of May. End of May. Okay. And people can find that out on stamps.org? Yes. Okay. And for anybody on, be, on social, we'll we'll be blasting that too behind Kathy. I don't have everything worked out yet for the registration process. It is a work in progress, and um, I'm going. I'm receiving some much needed tech support from the company that we use for our learning management system to guide me in the process. Forty-one years of summer seminar. How many of our other uh, people on the chat have been to summer seminar? Anyone? Oh, okay, cool. Well, I figured you, Ron. Jeez. <laughs> well, Tom Bowman was going to do an elective this year at summer seminar, so. I'm hoping that I'll get him scheduled for next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, nine COVID, I'll be there. <laughs> From your lips, buddy. I promised her. I really did. I, I stick to my word. No, I know. And it's just like, please, like, next year be okay. For those who are here, is there any topic that you've seen that you might want to try and tune into? Revenue. Ron's made me a believer. Same with Rob Hathaway. I can't wait to learn more about the revenue. 
go. <laughs> you know, I know you have a youth thing and everything. But why not something more on just beginners? Your, your video, I went back and watched it, is good, but, you know, beginner session, beginners in stamp collecting. Well, that information's already on C3A for free. Yeah, I know, but I, I realize that. But sometimes people like, you know, yours is more like here it is. It's not like you need a pencil. You need a pong. <laughs> so, um, hey, maybe. hey, Tom, thanks a lot for volunteering to do that video series <laughs> with Kathy. Um, I know she's going to follow up with you after this session and get that recorded ASAP so we can put that up. Uh, you know, rather than do it at summer seminar, hopefully we can get them geared up to be ready for summer seminar. So, thanks a lot for that, man. No, no, no problem, Scott. I told you that. What are you talking about, Tom Bowman? More like well, like I explained once before, like there's more to a hold on. There's more in a catalog than just looking for pictures sometimes. And that's never people don't realize that there's other ways of finding something, much like Scott was saying about in catalog, is union catalog. Well, this gives you more information if you know where to look without really you know, sacrificing Googling everything. It's better to read it than to take somebody's opinion on Google. That's what Abe Lincoln said. Oh, 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 I saw, you know, I, I saw that meme that you're referring to just this morning, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. Lesher, if you're from Reading area, so am I originally, Shillington. He is in the house. Uh, I taught at Governor Mifflin High School for one year in 1964-65. Uh, uh, I grew up in Lancaster County in Ephrata. Uh, and a year later, I moved to the Pittsburgh area because my wife was in physical therapy school out there. I taught several years out there. And then graduate school called me and offered me a uh, uh, coming back to graduate school at an increase over what I was making as a teacher and that's what I did and I eventually wound up living in Bucks County in eastern Pennsylvania and commuting to New Jersey and I I spent a career working for the New Jersey Department of Education. That's the only reason I said that the name Lesher our neighbors in Shillington were uh, May and Earl Lesher. Uh, I not a relative as far as I know. Uh, although my uh, my uh, paternal grandmother's maiden name was Sturgis, and Tom Sturgis uh, was uh, was her brother. So yes, I'm familiar with the area. Sounds like something we could we could use postal history to investigate even further. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the what what's the most exciting course that you're uh, that that you're looking forward to putting on Kathy? Or that I'm not put I'm not putting any of them on. No, I know, but, but but is there anything new that you're particularly excited about to share with members? I think I had one that just came in. Well, there's there's a couple that really interest me, but the one that I just got the description yesterday was on. It's got to be on my last page. Postal censoring challenges dealing with World War II mail violations. I just find postal history to be personally fascinating and to in the whole idea of censoring and the censor marks that were put on, put on mail i find that to be really interesting so that's one that um i think will be very interesting absolutely not that they won't they will all be interesting because they all have something different to offer certainly but one that gets you particularly excited that and one. Then the other one, uh, again, dealing with postal history is um, U.S. hand stamps that applied both a postmark and a cancellation. 
and that was in the, the late 1800s. And I think that cancellation practices are, are interesting too. I don't know if anybody used that feature here that we have on uh, our video conferencing the screenshot, but that was a nice preview that you, you rolled out for us for some of seminar because I went to the website and that info is not up right. No, it's not up yet. There, it's it's very involved to, because there's so much information there. It's not like for summer seminar I have 16 courses and you put 16 up. Now it's there's almost there's close to 60 different things. It's a lot of learning. So, so I am omitting the. Um, the bibliographies of the instructors. It will just be the title, um, the description, and when it is. Okay, that's fair. I'm writing. Did everyone get a chance to fully view the 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 table of classes? Okay. If anybody wanted to go back to that. Now is that it is that ready to be dispersed that information Kathy or because I did take screenshots It is I am still waiting there are, are I think 3 that I haven't gotten the confirmation from the instructor yet and there are I three different four that I do not have descriptions for yet I only have a title Well, we certainly hope that we will have uh, a nice turnout. People can start to get ready in the end of May and become familiar with the technology. And the goal will be to have um, registration up sometime next week. Okay. And then let people tell me when it doesn't work. Did we all hear that? We all have... Kathy, do you want to give out your email address on that? Or? Education at stamps.org. It will go to both Kathleen and I. So we can both scratch our heads and say, well, I don't know. <laughs> you fix it. No, you fix it. <laughs> Meanwhile, you guys can all get the air miles. Although I guess that sounds a little bit uh, silly at this time. <laughs> so, so I'd really you know, appreciate if anybody had any other questions or comments. Yeah, Dr. Brackville is one for feedback, so please, you know, even if you want to stay undercover or, or put it in the chat box, we're happy to, uh, to read that out loud for you. If there's anything that you'd like to see in seminar or an experience you'd like to share. All right. Going once. Going twice? Okay. Well, everyone, I think that this was a great information session. Thank you so much. I think that we're all really excited about Summer Seminar. It is the coup de grace for everyone who's interested in, uh, in, in continuing to learn. And I think that, that that's the basis of what philatelists do, is learn and learn and learn. I'd really like to see your brains. Uh, I won't get morbid. But anyway, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Brackbill and Ms. Kathleen Edwards for sharing all of these updates and really pivoting beautifully from 41 years of brick and mortar education and having everybody come and, and that whole camp experience uh, to switching on a dime and taking this and putting on the, the, the website and on a, on a, on a web platform. That, that, that speaks volumes um, to your adaptability and your commitment to APS members and the, the tradition of summer seminar. So stay tuned for all of our friends. I'm assuming that all of you are on social media, but if not, there are going to be updates through in the newsletters and feel free to email Kathy at education at stamps.org. If you forget that, Heidi at stamps.org. We can always help you navigate your way back to summer seminar and answer any questions. Um, until then, I bid you peace and health. We have another stamp chat at 7 p.m. with Mr. Kurt Streepy 
He'll be speaking with us about collecting first issues of the world. So come on back at 7 p.m. Eastern tonight. Thank you so much for your support. Go and check out stamps.org. Uh, if you're not a member, remember that information is free through the end of May. That includes the APRL and the AP is also online. So do check it out and invite a friend to the next chat. Hope to see you again soon. And thanks so much for joining us. Everyone Thank you, take Heidi. Care now. See you tomorrow or see you tonight. Bye bye. Bye, Mark. Good to see you. Bye, Stuart. Bye, Marty. Bye, Bob. Bye, bye. Alan, your kitty. Bye, 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 everybody. Bye, James Gates. Bye, Tom Bowman. James, I'm going to, I still want to see you in Cooperstown. Bye, friends. <laughs>